Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Bridging Impact Podcast, the podcast that is passing wisdom to the next generation of athletes, coaches, and parents to transform leaders on and off the court. And welcome to our Friday edition of Coach's Corner. I'm your host, Coach Furtado, where on Fridays I share you know different things that parents are asking me, athletes are asking me, and also what I have been learning from the world around me. It is March Madness time, and the madness has already gotten off to a great start. Pac-12, Arizona takes a loss to Princeton, and Furman with a pretty much a buzzer beater off a wild pass for a bucket, right? That is a perfect day to start. I'm sure a lot of people's brackets are already busted, but hey, Coaches is still in the 90th percentile, so ding, 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 give him a little bit of credit. All right, so let's dive in. Um, today's topic I want to talk about is developing athletes' confidence, and I, it's a very, very broad topic, and I'm probably actually going to circle around to it once I have a little bit more, you know, concrete information. Right now, it's kind of, I'm going to just paint with a general brush um, over it today, and because I had conversations yesterday with a couple athletes, you know, and one of the athletes was, he was explaining to me, he's like, coach, I have confidence, I drive in, in practices, but how do I drive in games, right? And I was just, you know, kind of asking him some questions, and it kind of came down to, he doesn't have the confidence to do it in games. And I think that's a really interesting standpoint because I had similar challenges as a player where I would I would go and play pickup, you know, at this place. It was called Hell Sport, and I would feel more confident playing there than I would maybe playing in practice or in games um, with the varsity team. And, and that's kind of a mental block that, you know, coaches and parents can also, you know, kind of help walk through. It's kind of gets a little bit more challenging once you have teenagers, you know, and they may not trust you as more, but if you can kind of start to understand kind of the psychology behind it, um, we can kind of go through that. So, you know, understanding that two of the biggest reasons that players shoot better in practices, but don't shoot as well in the games. And I'll give you one, two, three to guess. All right, if you guessed, they do not practice at game speed and they do not shoot with enough pressure, then you would be correct. So that, that's a, that applies for everything. I, I honestly, it's just not shooting. Like you can do that for hitting in baseball. You could do that for, for dribbling and ball handling. You know, a lot of times players, and, and I really want to target this more towards like the, the higher age middle school and the high school level. I don't want to, I mean, you can put pressure on your, elementary school and your your younger middle school but you have to kind of um, structure that that pressure you don't want to keep them in the pressure cooker all the time you know you want to make sure that there there is fun but as you know athletes rank up they go to the you know next level they are going to have to feel and understand how to you know play with confidence because there's so many different athletes and Number one, I feel like confidence comes from repetition, right? Like I am not confident in the kitchen because I, you know, I eat up Trader Joe's frozen food all the time. So I, if you ask me to make a big meal for the family, I'm not going to be confident in the kitchen because my cooking skills, my chefing skills, they're not ironed out. So that's number one. Like, I don't think you can really truly be confident at your craft until you have put in a lot of time and effort. And so that's, that's a really important one is, you know, how are your athletes training? You know, are they just going to the park? Are they just putting up a couple of shots really slowly with no pressure on it all? Well, then they're not going to get better because they're not putting pressure on themselves and they're not practicing at game speed. Those are two really, really important things. And if you take anything away from this podcast, that would be number one, because it's so imperative to practice at uncomfortable speeds because in the games, everything speeds up. Our mind starts to speed up and we'll touch a little bit more on how to slow that down in a minute, but also there's just more pressure, right? You've got parents in the stands, you've got coaches yelling, you've got referees refing, you know, you've got, you know, players jawing back and forth at each other's, you know, and you got people, you friends in the stands you want to impress. There's just more pressure in general. And I watched as some of our, you know, varsity guys, they shot way better practice than they did in games because for a couple of reasons, I think towards the end, we started doing pressure shooting more, but I also just don't think they were always shooting game speed shots, right? You have to shoot uncomfortably quick. And I think, you know, if you are a basketball parent and you want, you know, and a good example, right? Everyone looks at Curry, but I actually think his partner, Clay Thompson, does an unbelievable job at shooting quick. So that's a great person to potentially study if you want to shoot quicker. For those that are not 
necessarily basketball parents. That's all right. There's always going to be other great athletes to, you know, model your kids game around. So I think also, um, the mental side that, that would be my second point, right. Is, you know, number one, I said, confidence comes from repetition. Number two is just your thoughts feed everything. And I like to choose the word um, productive thoughts instead of positive thoughts, because I think the word positive has kind of been misconstrued into like happiness and rainbow land and productive thoughts are, you know, if you miss, I'm just going to keep it on the basketball train. If you miss three shots in a row, like it is a not, it is not a productive thought to say, Hey, I suck at shooting. Right. You may want to, you know, if you're training, right. Go in, go in closer. Right. If you're in game, right. You have to understand, Hey, if I will take the next, I will take, and I will make the next open shot, but I don't need to force it. Right. Having that productive self-talk. And actually one thing that I have seen recently this week is I've seen athletes say their name. Actually, it helps them break out of cycles. So I know, you know, it's like, okay. So for me, it's like, Hey, Justin, you will make the next shot. Like it sounds really weird and kind of cheesy, but, um, our brain recognizes our thoughts. And so if we're having these repetitive negative thoughts, then, you know, we are not going to, we are going to actually do those negative thoughts. Like don't make a turnover. If we tell ourselves, don't make a turnover, we're going to make a turnover because our brain isn't able, our our brain just recognizes the category of turnover. And, you know, we're so worried about not making a turnover, we end up making a turnover. And that is a great episode, Betsy Buderick on communication. That's a great one for coaches and parents on what to do, but also you can take it in with yourself within. And I think the other thing is, you know, I don't, I'm not even sure how often, you know, high school athletes and and even middle school athletes definitely are are aware of what they say. And I think that awareness is what probably has to come first before you can really change those thoughts to be more productive. So I would just ask, you know, be like, Hey, you know, when you're, when you're practicing, when you miss a couple shots, what do you say to yourself? Right. They might not even know it might be subconscious. You know, it might be something that, you know, unfortunately a parent said, or a coach said to them, you know, at some point in their career, and then they're just repeating that on, on, because that's often how thoughts work. And so really improving that, improving those to be productive, becoming aware, and then kind of making that shift will be a big improvement. And then also just visualization. Like this is a really big one. It's a big one, especially for high school athletes who, you know, may, you know, maybe super sore. They may not want to put in a lot of reps, but you can put in mental reps, especially for in-game. Like that's really important, especially like I know we're now in the off season for basketball, but, you know, maybe you're a baseball parent or something, but, you know, that you have to have you know, kids and athletes visualize themselves succeed, right? So what does that mean? Um, let's use free throws, right? Free throws are a big one, especially here in March Madness, right? You got to close out games or you can make games closer by making your free throws. And, and that's a lot of pressure because the whole game is watching. And so a great exercise, right, is to close your eyes and just imagine yourself making you know, those two big free throws and the more free throws and the more vividly you can visualize it, the better. So if you can visualize the stance, the right gym, the color of your jersey, right? The more you'll be able to believe it. You can look at it in a couple of perspectives. Um, You can look at it in the perspective of, okay, you're the actual shooter and you can watch yourself from a third party perspective. Um, Both of them have, you know, their positives that can really be helpful for athletes. And that's one that I didn't really explore that much as an athlete, something that I feel like is a little bit newer age, right? Where I think, especially after the pandemic, we've been really focusing on that. But I definitely think that's something that, you know, a tool that you can give to your athletes. And, you know, the kind of last bit of advice I have is really just that confidence is a skill. Like a lot of times I think we think, right, we look at certain people are more confident than others, right? And, you know, people in the NBA, WNBA, they struggle with confidence just as much as we regular people do. And I think it's really important to just remind your athlete that it's an ebb and flow and they they may feel more confident in this game than in this game. But as long as they're kind of always practicing that skill, it is right. The mental side of sports is it's, it's a game changer. You're going to be able to affect the game at a so much higher rate. So, I really, you know, want to encourage you to help your athlete explore that. And as always, I appreciate you all. Um, if you got something out of this, this is a really important episode. Um, so go go share this with a friend. I have 
a lot of mental game athletes on the Bridging Impact podcast. If you scroll through, there's a lot of great resources that they all have as well. Um, you got Tammy Matheny, Am- Dr. Amber Selking, you know, Betsy Buterick, you know, the, the list goes on. There's a ton of great resources. So go through, go listen to some of those old episodes if you haven't. And for those of you that, you know, listen every week, I appreciate you all. So I will be in your ears and eyes next Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. Coach Furtado out.